we have already uh, discussed about the concept of enthalpy and introduced us it as the uh, one of the thermodynamic potentials represented by h now we will try to understand more about the properties of this quantity uh, we will start by explaining a historical experiment named as porous plug experiment otherwise known as the throttling process now uh, let's first define what is meant by a throttling process it's an adiabatic process in which a gas is allowed to undergo a sudden expansion through a valve or a porous plug a porous plug is otherwise known as throttle throttle and this process is uh, this process of uh, adiabatic expansion sudden expansion is what is known as throttling process or simply as throttling now uh, you can see uh, a typical image of a throttle so this is uh, the external appearance of a uh, throttle so these are all throttles and the internal structure of a throttle uh, is uh, shown here with its uh, tip uh, just highlighted a throttle or a porous plug uh, is a simple device used in gas flow experiments in order to have a controlled flow of gas from one uh, chamber to the other chamber so uh, there are different uh, porous plugs having different uh, uh, size differently sized pores you know pore means fine holes so what happens is that uh, if you close uh, one chamber using this porous plug you and if you give some pressure to that chamber on one side of the chamber you are filling some gas inside the chamber and you give some pressure what will happen that uh, due to the pressure uh, the gas will be able to uh, pass through force th through this particular pose and it will reach the other compartment so uh, in a sense we can say that porous plugs are nothing but simple uh, devices used to have some sort of a controlled flow of uh, fluids especially gas and uh, several experiments were done using porous plug uh, and uh, one such experiment is uh, uh, just uh, the throttling process experiment or the porous plug experiment okay which has got some historical importance because it was uh, through this experiment that um, so many properties of uh, fluid systems could be identified now uh, our aim is to understand uh, the concept of enthalpy what happens uh, to the quantity known as enthalpy uh, initially and finally or before the throttling and after the throttling uh, will there be any effect for the enthalpy of the system that's what we are going to investigate so now uh, the experimental uh, arrangement is shown here in figure a and figure b so you can see that uh, uh, we are having an insulated cylinder so we are having an insulated cylinder so this uh, uh, solid lines are representing the walls of an insulated cylinder uh, with the uh, two pistons so usually we, we were having a single piston but now we are having two pistons so the pistons are connected or fitted uh, on the opposite sides of the uh, okay uh, on the opposite sides of what is known as a porous plug so this schematically shows what is known as porous plug so uh, this is okay it's uh, dimensions or it's a uh, uh, shape uh, is not identical now here but it's a schematic representation only so if uh, this uh, cylinder is uh, you know or this uh, arrangement container is cylindrical in nature automatically you can see this porous plug is also uh, having some definite shape and all commonly so understand that uh, this particular thing what is shaded here so this is i'm just uh, uh, highlighting it by using the red line so this is uh, nothing but representing a porous plug that is connected between the two chambers so uh, the thing is used here right now uh, the two adiabatic pistons have been connected uh, or placed on both sides of the porous plug and uh, these two pistons are uh, as usual uh, can be moved back and forth okay you can uh, push it to one side or the, okay, the other side so the, they are movable to both the sides uh, by exerting some pressure right now you can see uh, the, some gas 
uh, is taken inside the cylinder. Uh, let's say that initially the gas is taken inside the left chamber, left chamber here. So this is the left chamber and uh, the uh, right piston is kept close to the porous plug. The right, uh, the right piston is kept close to the porous plug. Uh, you uh, imagine that the porous plug is fixed there. The porous plug is fixed there and the pistons are mobile. So the gas is enclosed here and uh, let's say that initially let the volume of the gas here be VI. On the left chamber the volume of the gas be VI and its pressure be PI. So VI and PI are the uh, volume and uh, pressure initially for the gas contained in the uh, left chamber. Now uh, let's imagine that we are pushing the left piston towards the right with some speed. So what will happen is that the gas in this chamber will be forced to pass through the pores. Through the pores the gas will be forced to go, go to the other side. So due to the gas moving to the other side there will be some pressure building up in between the porous plug and the right piston. So what will happen the right piston will be just moving back because more and more gas will be going to the other side. It's just like you know you are pushing something to the other side through a porous wall. Exactly. So what will happen is that the uh, right side piston will be retreating. It will be moving back and back as you push it uh, more and more to the right. So the final state there are some conditions for this pushing and all that I will mention now. The final state of the cylinder piston system is shown in figure B here. So what has happened? You can see uh, the porous plug has remained in its own position. So the position has been maintained if you compare it. The piston, left piston has moved from here to here. Is it not? The piston was initially here and now the piston has moved here. So what has happened? All the gas sample that was filled in the left chamber has now got pressed or forced through the porous plug to reach the right side of the cylinder. And due to this particular uh, gas filling the right side, the piston, right piston which was earlier here has now moved to here. So the piston's position have got retreated to this particular uh, position, right? So that Finally, let us assume that let PF be the final pressure and VF be the volume okay, of the right chamber, volume of the right chamber. Now, uh, let's uh, just bring in the conditions. So the condition is that let's assume that initially the pressure is PI and the finally the pressure of the right chamber is PF. So we uh, imagine that throughout the experiment, throughout the experiment, let PI and PF maintain this relationship. PI is greater than PF. It means that the let the pressures PI and PF remain constant during the process and as initially it was greater than PF, PI was greater than PF. Throughout the experiment the PI and PF are maintained constant. So that is the speciality of this experiment, okay, throughout the experiment. Think of how it is possible throughout the process or experiment. PI and PF are maintained constant and the relation between them so remains the same. So imagine that PA is having some definite value, okay, PA is having some definite value uh, and uh, just uh, initially you can suppose that there was no PF but uh, soon after you can neglect that, uh, see, just uh, in the beginning soon after what happens is that if you are moving the piston okay like if you are uh, if the pistons left and right pistons are moved at unequal speeds or different speeds okay to the right simultaneously uh, the two pistons are moved to the uh, other side like you are pushing uh, one uh, left piston to the right so uh, when you push the left piston to the right what may happen this gas may get compressed okay but you will not allow the gas to get compressed okay due to this pushing uh, the gas will be just passing to the other chamber through the uh, okay porous plug 
So the speed of pushing the left piston has to be so adjusted that the pressure inside is always maintained at its initial value PI. How is it possible? The more you push, the volume will be getting reduced. But uh, as the volume gets reduced, um, the number of uh, moles of the gas or uh, the number of particles of the gas sample also will be getting reduced. So there will be less gas, less amount of gas in the left chamber in occupying less volume. So it is uh, okay, possible to maintain constant pressure here by controlling the flow of gas to the other chamber. Now, uh, as more and more gas reach the other chamber, as more and more gas reach the other chamber, there may be a chance that the pressure will go on building up, but the arrangement will not permit that. So as more and more gaseous particles or gas molecules reach the other chamber, what should happen? the right side piston should be moving back there uh, we can do that it's uh, okay it has been done so the right side piston the right piston will be slowly slowly moving or it will be just uh, pulled back such that the pressure whatever pressure that happened initially soon after uh, the beginning of uh, the diffusion of or the uh, see, uh, transfer of the gas molecules the same pressure will be maintained throughout and how is it possible it's possible initially okay because in the same manner See, as more gas molecules reach the uh, right chamber, uh, the volume also should be increased proportionately so that you can keep the pressure what? constant. So this is a very, very important uh, okay, just condition uh, that is met during the porous plug experiment. Okay, so remember PI and PF are maintained constant by uh, controlling the speed with which the left piston and the right piston are moving towards the right side. They move with the different speeds to the right side so as to keep the uh, pressure on both the chambers uh, uh, constant throughout the experiment. Okay, so that is what we are uh, doing. Now, under these conditions, uh, let's uh, just analyze it mathematically. So, you can see from the first law of thermodynamics, uh, if the final uh, okay internal energy of uh, the uh, sample that is uf and the initial internal energy is ui so i can write uf minus ui is in general or du is equal to is not for infinitesimal process we have been writing du equal to d bar q plus d bar w for a finite process i can write delta u uf minus ui is equal to q plus w this is a general equation for any uh, say process right now uh, we are considering an adiabatic process right because all the walls are ad adiabatic is it not no heat transfer occurs either across the walls or through the piston okay so the system is perfectly isolated from the surrounding so uh, you can see the q here in this case so here q is equal to zero so what do you get you will get uh, uh, since q is equal to zero u f minus u i in the case of throttling process can be written exactly equal to what w the work which work the mechanical work done in uh, moving the pistons okay two pistons are moved so there will be a contribution of work by the motion of each of the pistons so let me say that this is my equation number two uh, the reason is that uh, q is equal to zero since q equal to zero due, uh, due to the adiabatic enclosure now uh, let's calculate what is the net work done net work done net work done so that we can substitute it in equation two on the gas net work done on the gas okay so what is the net work done on the gas w is equal to so remember there will be two contributions uh, contribution due to the movement of uh, piston number uh, one or on the left and on the piston on the right both the pistons are okay just moved so there will be work done due to both of them so i can say that uh, generally work done uh, due to hydrostatic work done due to change in volume is what minus integral of pdv right so i can say for the left piston it is minus integral of what is p on the left side pi and volume change i'm just writing as dv okay and the second one so w1 plus w2 you can write so what is the second one that is again minus it be actually plus but it is uh, minus sign is uh, a part of the equation so minus integral of right side the pressure is uh, p of dv P of dv now you have to put the proper limits here so this is just adding w1 and w2 okay so 
uh, what about the left side what was the initial volume for the left side initial volume was vi okay for the left side initial volume is vi and what is the final volume you can see that there is uh, no volume enclosed uh, between porous plug and the uh, left piston so it is from zero but for the second integral what is the initial volume initial volume was zero and the final volume is what vf final volume is vf for the second chamber so we are doing that one now uh, you can easily perform this integration why it's quite easy to perform this integration it's just a trivial integration because we have uh, made the condition that pi and pf remains constant throughout the process so you can take pi out of the integration here also uh, in the both the integrals so what will happen in the first uh, integral that will become simply pi taken outside there is a negative sign uh, integral of dv will be v but you are integrating from v i to zero so this minus sign will get rid of what it be because it will be uh, initial value minus final uh, sorry final value minus initial value so it will be uh, something like uh, minus is it not okay uh, minus p i into right integral dv is v so that is what zero minus v i this is the way in which it will come okay and the other one is uh, straightforward minus p f is taken outside then you integrate it final value v of minus initial value zero so that's what you are getting so you will be getting this is equal to how much simply uh, you are getting it as p i v i is not first one becomes plus p i v i minus p of v of so let me say this is my third equation now uh, can't you substitute 3 into so 3 into gives 3 into gives what is that you will get u f minus u i is equal to simply p i v i minus p f v f okay what you do just let's make a rearrangement what i am doing is that i am taking uh, this uh, this term to the other side okay this term to the other side so i am taking this one to here and this term to this one okay on the other side so what is happening so here you will be getting u f plus p f v f minus will become plus now p f v f that will be equal to u i plus p i v i okay so that is what we are going to get now see look at what is this u of plus p of v of just forget about e f it's like u plus p v u plus p v is nothing but our h the enthalpy and that is the enthalpy corresponding to the final state and that is equal to what is u i plus u plus p v on the right side that is also enthalpy but that was the initial enthalpy so what is the conclusion that we, we have finally uh, okay, arrived at so you can see that uh, uh, as a result of the porous plug experiment whatever initial enthalpy was there that uh, the final enthalpy is also the same or the conclusion is that the initial and the final enthalpies are the same during a throttling process the initial that is the only conclusion that we are doing we uh, conclude that the initial and final enthalpies remain the same or they are equal in a throttling process okay so that's about uh, the throttling and the uh, throttling process uh, is uh, actually used to uh, say define the importance of uh, the, uh, the quantity known as enthalpy so you can see that we are not talking about uh, internal energy during a throttling process what remains constant is not internal energy instead what it is the uh, enthalpy so internal energy is not uh, internal energy is not a sufficient uh, quantity to explain the process of throttling so what remains constant in throttling is what internal energy so that is a very important conclusion right so now uh, uh, one or two things more uh, before we uh, wind up the uh, okay discussion on uh, this uh, enthalpy our aim was to understand the properties of enthalpy better now one more thing see uh, that is uh, uh, we have already used this idea in previous discussions but we didn't explain much enthalpy represents the heat content of the system at constant pressure so this is a very important concept okay why enthalpy uh, is considered to be the heat representative of the heat content of the system at constant pressure conditions 
so as there was a similar argument that uh, internal energy so out of u h a and g this u and h have some similar uh, okay uh, z properties and a and g are having some uh, they are actually forming uh, some sort of a pair like quantities u and h both of them uh, are having some common properties so it is easy so a and g are free energies but u and h are not like that is it not so uh, u is regarded as uh, a representation of the heat content of the system at constant volume so u is related to cv and h is related to cp so this is what exactly we are doing okay so uh, enthalpy uh, we can uh, say that uh, h was or we obtained an equation so h is equal to is it not what are the natural variables of h h uh, natural variables are ps right we have used it so h is a function of ps so from that uh, uh, we have obtained that uh, dh is equal to do you remember what is that one dh is equal to you obtained something like a tds plus vdp right tds plus uh, vdp or dh is equal to dq plus vdp is it not so i can write like this one so dq plus vdp okay you can uh, either recall it from your memory or you can just uh, derive it then and there how do you derive it then and there if needed so you recall the equation of h h is equal to u plus pv okay h equal to u plus pv then you take dh here that's way in which we obtained previously so the, it will be equal to du plus what pdv plus what vdp and uh, this du plus pdv by the first law of thermodynamics that is nothing but what d bar q so this d bar q plus what vdp that's what i have written here okay and this d bar q only we finally wrote as what tds plus what vdp so that's the way in which we proceeded so anyway just uh, whenever you need it uh, remember how to do that so dh is equal to d bar q plus vdp that is what we have right now uh, let me do one thing let me divide both sides by uh, okay dt so let me divide both sides it's total differential i have the freedom to divide it so what will happen it is it becomes what dh by dt it will be equal to dq by dt and here it will be dp by dt right now let me make a condition if uh, okay uh, so we are talking about pressure right so if p is maintained as a constant if p is a constant during the process then what will happen is that uh, see dp term this particular term will be zero because p equal to constant means dp equal to zero so p will be equal to zero so what is left with so then i will be writing this equation better as a uh, partial derivative so how do you write the equation so therefore dou h with respect to dou t at a constant pressure conditions is not that will be equal to dou bar q with respect to dou t that to under what constant pressure conditions and you know the right side is nothing but the definition for uh, what you call as cp okay the heat capacity at a constant pressure so we conclude we conclude that the h okay nothing but enthalpy uh, remember don't get confused this is a very common mistake that is seen h okay is not Helmholtz free energy so never commit uh, such a mistake please h we represent enthalpy Helmholtz free energy was represented either by a or by f a or f so h stands for enthalpy not Helmholtz free energy don't remember this h don't connect this h erroneously with uh, okay hello for free energy please so cp so this is the reason why we say that uh, uh, the h here which is uh, nothing but the enthalpy is related to the uh, okay heat content heat content you know heat capacity represents the uh, heat content actually right okay more the heat capacity means more amount of heat can be uh, okay stored in that system without changing its what uh, temperature further right so uh, cp uh, like so it represents the cp of a system constant at a constant pressure so there is a concept that you have to keep in mind okay one thing more uh, if you uh, keep or uh, let me call this equation as one and let me call this equation as what two so let me use one okay at constant pressure at a constant pressure one we initially wrote as what dh by dt is equal to right dh by dt is equal to at constant pressure please uh, remember so uh, what you wrote dh by dt at constant pressure will be equal to cp that's what we can write finally 
right? Because dQ by dt at constant pressure is equal to dt. So under same condition. So I can write that dH is equal to, finally you can write Cp dt. There will be a lot of equations. Uh, uh, there is no dearth of equations uh, in the case of thermodynamics. So many equations, all interrelated, but it's quite funny. Okay, if you understand it's a rhythm. So dH is equal to Cp dt. Now let me do one thing. Let me uh, just uh, okay, integrate this equation on both sides. So integrating on both sides, what will be the thing? It will be integral dH. Integral, it's a total differential. So total difference can be integrated. Moreover, remember that H, H, T, etc. all are state functions. So st all state functions uh, correspond to exact differentials. So you can uh, clearly differentiate it. Okay, or you can just what integrate it. That's the thing, you'll be getting the whole thing. So integrating dH, integrating dH from initial to final state. So there will be initial value for uh, enthalpy and final value for the enthalpy. When you integrate it, I have to integrate on the right side also. So you can treat uh, Cp as a constant and you can take it outside. So what will be the thing? So you can just take what from initial state to the final state of the system, dt. So it's equal to Cp times, so T final, some final value of the temperature minus what? T initial. Okay, so uh, I can say uh, what is on the left side that is what H of minus H I, H of minus H I or D H. Okay, that is equal to C P into T F minus T I. See, just uh, take it as T F minus T I. Uh, there is some technical problem with my pen. So that is a conclusion. Okay, these are all results. Uh, it may not be individually uh, important for us. But why, why, why we discuss all these things? Because uh, maybe in a later topic, okay, not ex uh, of course not in our course. Uh, somewhere uh, we will be able to use this concept uh, directly. Okay, so these are all uh, informations, information that is what hidden in all these simple functions. That's why uh, we can in another way also literally we can uh, say that these functions, whether you call H, U, G, or A, all these functions are. Uh, being a uh, lot many stories to tell I told you that okay uh, uh, see uh, at first look you will see that oh these are some simple uh, functions but all these functions are so relevant in thermodynamics because a lot of uh, information is actually latent or sleeping inside all these functions and it is up to the uh, okay just uh, uh, people like us uh, to be patient enough and uh, uh, see uh, just uh, uh, trying to understand what all things are hidden there so you can spend time on it if you uh, are interested really if you feel that this is your cup of tea uh, see that you explore all these things you can read more uh, okay from other textbooks and all and improve your concepts better now uh, just uh, see concluding this session uh, i'm just uh, reproducing uh, a tabular uh, okay arrangement uh, showing the comparison between enthalpy and internal energy. I told you that out of the four, okay, it's not U, H, uh, A and G, the thermodynamic potentials. A and G share some common properties. U and H also share what? Some similarities. But uh, always uh, there are a lot of uh, okay, dissimilarities also. So it's always good that you compare uh, the properties of enthalpy with the internal energy. So the tabular column is available in your own uh, okay, uh, notes. Uh, what is given? It's given in the textbook. So you can just uh, compare uh, every equation that is given in the table uh, is actually known to you. You can see that U is a function of Vs and H is a function of Ps. It's just a comparison. So for free expansion. Yeah, we are discussed about free expansion. Don't you remember that? Okay, free expansion, uh, adiabatic free expansion and all we have just uh, okay, uh, discussed about that. So uh, for uh, free expansion, uh, you will see that UA equal to U of, but for the uh, throttling process that we have discussed just now, uh, it's not U which is remaining constant, but instead it is what? H, I or uh, enthalpy which is what? Remaining constant. So remember throttling process is special kind of adiabatic expansion process, maintaining pressure on both the sides constant. And that is a condition. It is not so in the case of what free expansion. Okay, their internal energy was remaining constant. So and uh, see uh, these all equations also we have just uh, used now and defined. So for isochoric process a relation and uh, for uh, isobaric process is a relation. This only we have written just now was Cp into Tf minus okay uh, Ti the same equation only. So this equation yeah we have just uh, done all these equations you can just uh, 
try to understand these are the uh, differentials uh, that we have discussed here these are the derivatives that we have just summarized earlier so all this uh, table will help you to uh, compare okay so uh, all the equations so just uh, try to compare it yourself and uh, see that you get the concepts well okay i conclude here thank you